Hello and welcome to a new episode of Emotion Ocean Talks. You can probably already guess today's topic. Octopuses, yet again. But well, it's actually not only about octopuses. It's much more about their skin. About their incredible ability to change their skin, the color and the texture. And thus to hide, to blend with the environment. And we will be looking more in detail how those animals actually do that. You have seen in the video before that the octopuses can change their color quickly. And they are actually, well, all the cephalopods are the only animals, known to me at least, who regulate, who control, the camouflage, the coloring system of the skin through the brain. All other animals have a hormonal control, so it's slower, it's not as flexible. But here, in the octopus, we actually have a specific lobe of the brain, which is only to control the color system, the body patterns of the animal. But how is this regulation of the color of the skin really done? So let's have a look at the morphology, the cellular components of the octopus skin. Let's say this is the surface of the octopus skin. Here is inside, that is outside. Then we have three layers of cells which are involved in the whole coloring topic. On the outside we have so-called chromatophores which have brown, blackish, orange, reddish or yellow pigments. Underneath the chromatophores we have cells which don't have a color by themselves. But those cells contain chitin platelets stacked regularly. And those platelets reflect light of a specific wavelength, so of a specific color. Those cells are called the iridophores. And the colors that are reflected by those iridophores are actually blues and greens. So while the chromatophores produce yellow, orange, reddish, brown, blackish colors, the iridophores are there in order to give the skin blue and green colors. And underneath the iridophores are is the third type of cell, which are very elongated flat cells covered by little knobs. Those cells are called the leucophores. And they don't have a color by themselves. They scatter the light of every color that hits them. So if red light hits them, red light will be reflected or scattered out again and that patch will appear red. If blue light hits it, it will be blue. If white light hits it, so all the different colors, this patch will appear white. So we have the different colors available here. Yellow, red, blue, brown, blackish, green, blue and here ambient color, whichever color light comes in will be reflected. But how does the changing of color work? The color changes are mainly due to the chromatophores. So let's have a closer look at the chromatophores. A chromatophore exists of a pigment sac which is highly elastic. Surrounded it is by the rest of the cell with a big surface, but because it is usually contracted, the surface of the cell is in many folds. 
within those folds are all the normal organelles of a cell. So somewhere we have the nucleus of the cell and then we have all the other organelles there. The chromatophore is on the outside connected to muscle fibers. And the muscle fibers are innervated by nerves. So, what happens here? If the brain of the octopus says this spot has to be orange, then there will be a nerve signal given from the brain through these nerve fibers to the muscle in order to contract. Contracting of those muscles means that they will shorten, they will move away from each other those ends and by doing so they will elongate the chromatophore. And with the chromatophore, with the complete cell spreading out, also the elastic pigment sac will spread out. So instead of this tiny orange spot here, which is a contracted chromatophore, we will have an elongated orange layer here. And that means this spot is impenetrable for light, so no light will reach the iridophores or leucophores, no blue, green or anything else, but only the orange will be visible. And if it is a brown chromatophore, it will be brown. And only at the spots where the chromatophores are contracted, the cells below will be hit by light, and so only there we will have the blue-green or the ambient color reflected by the leucophores. So with this system, we can change the color of the skin or the octopus actually can change the color and it's all under the control of the brain, a specific lobe in the brain which by itself is again controlled by the visual lobes. So it's all what the octopus sees through its extremely good eyes. These are lens eyes comparable to our eyes in their function though not in evolution but they are really good eyes which can only see black and white, they are colorblind those guys, but still due to optical input the visual lobe of the brain will command the chromatophore controlling lobe which parts of the skin have to get which color and thus the control and the changes of the color can be extremely fast. But the camouflaging ability of an octopus does not only rely on color changes, chromatic changes, but also on changes of the skin's texture. So within the skin of an octopus are a lot of small muscle fibers arranged in papillae. And those papillae can form bumps or even spikes like here all over the surface of the octopus skin. Those traumatic and textural changes are both components of the visual behavior of an octopus. The visual behavior is clustered into body patterns, which consist, in addition to the two mentioned components, also of the overall holding of the body, the posture, as well as movements, locomotion. So, behavior is reflected in body patterns and body patterns are composed of chromatic, textural, posture and locomotive components. Just to give you an idea, I know about at least four octopus species in which those body patterns have been examined more closely and um, there were 12 to 19 chromatic components found in each of the four species, four to six textural components, eight to 14 different postures, and two to four locomotive components. So you can combine all of them and get quite a number of different body patterns available. But still, the number of body patterns in the octopuses is limited. And they are always bound to specific behavior. So what is this behavior where the body pattern is involved? On one hand it is camouflage in order to hide themselves from their predators or from their prey. 
Then, body patterns are also used for communication. Communication with animals of other species or the same species. Other species is like, hey, here I am, or like, hey, you, pray, move, that I can better catch you. Communication with the own species can be about territory or it can be about mating. So there are many different situations where the animals need to communicate. And this behavior which uses the body patterns does vary a lot between different octopuses. Well, my friend here and I thank you for watching this episode of Emotion Ocean Talks. I hope you liked what you learned about octopuses and you will tune in again on some other of the ocean talks. Thanks and goodbye.